You see this? This is my original iPod Touch. And 11 year old me, I absolutely loved this thing. From taking weird photos of stuff going on around me to binge watching YouTube when the logo used to look like this, my iPod Touch, I've got a hell of a lot of memories with this thing. But do you wanna know what I did the most when I held my iPod Touch in my greasy little child fingers? Gaming. I spent hours and hours hours of my life playing all sorts of different mobile games. Jetpack Joyride, Fruit Ninja, the demo version of Minecraft Pocket Edition, Pixel Gun 3D, and of course, a small little game that you may have heard of. A game all about the might of industry, witchcraft, pillaging local villages, and building your empire. Cock. Yeah, just like all of the other millions of children across the globe, I played a shit ton of Clash of Clans when I was younger. No, <laughs> no grass touching for me. And fast forward a few years, I still got Clash of Clans on my phone. Like, look, here's my village. <laughs> I can confirm this. This is indeed a Clash of Clans village to ever exist. But more importantly, Clash of Clans, it was my first introduction to a mobile gaming company called... Sup... Urkel? Supercell. A mobile gaming company based in Finland that's gone on to become one of the big boys, the tribal chief of the mobile gaming industry. The thing is though, in the year of our Lord circa 2023 AD, if you ask anybody on the internet what they think of Sup Urkel, as soon as those words exit your mouth, there's only one word that will metamorphosize in the brain of the person that you're asking. Greed. Sure, Supercell, they may be one of the biggest companies in the mobile gaming industry but they're also one of the greediest companies in the mobile gaming industry. And here's why. But first, you see that red button with the word subscribe on it? Press it. Press it now. And join my Discord server, link in the pinned comment. Microtransactions. <laughs> What started off as stuff like this, you know, $2 Bethesda horse armor, has morphed into a full-on predatory plague that has infested almost every single type of video game nowadays. And if you want to find a hive, a cesspool of this plague, all you have to do is look no further than games that are, massive quotation marks here, free to play. Now, I'm pretty sure you've noticed this, but you know how so many different games, especially games from AAA studios, they're being released into our world at the massive extraordinary price of zero dollars and zero cents. If you think this is being done out of the kindness of game developers' hearts, mate, you're about as far away from the truth as humanly possible. Like, you're all the way over here. Game studios, they're not your friends. First off, making a game free to play pretty much guarantees larger player numbers. But secondly, and more importantly, this is all done to prey on and manipulate you. And this manipulation starts as soon as you click download. I wanna ask you a question here, person watching this video. Let's say that for quite a few days now, you've been cosplaying Greg Heffley and you've been playing a specific game. Let's call this game, uh, um, I don't know, five, yeah, sure, five days at Heavy Team Fortress. But you're really not enjoying playing it. You're hating your life. So you've made the big boy decision to boot five days at Heavy Team Fortress off your hard drive. Would you feel more shitty and bad about uninstalling the game if you paid full price for it? You know, 60 to 70 Mr. Beast dollars? Or would you feel more shitty and bad about uninstalling the game if you paid nothing for it? Zero Mr. Beast dollars. If you want, I will give you a few seconds to work it out. Really use your brain here. Obviously, you wouldn't give a shit about uninstalling the game if you didn't pay anything for it. Because it's free. Look, it says it right there. Free to play. At the end of the day, the only thing you spent on this free to play game, it's your time. Or is it? You see, considering that game studio number 257 just released their brand new revolutionary extraordinary video game for free, of course, they're not going to make any money off of sales because... Well, how would they? I mean, zero times by zero, <laughs> it's still zero, you know, it's basic maths. So, considering they're not gonna make any money off of sales and developing a video game, 
It does take quite a bit of money. They need to make all of the money they sunk into development, salaries, marketing, all of that type of stuff. They need to make it all back somehow. And this is where microtransactions come into the picture. This is where these studios start to sink their teeth into you. Welcome to something I like to call the illusion of free to play. Right, cool. Just downloaded this free to play, free to play game. What? What the fuck is this? If you hop onto your PC or your console or your mobile phone right now and download a game that's free to play, you can bet your ass that after two seconds of gawking at the pretty shapes and colors on the menu and begging your kittens to download it and play with you in a Discord call, you will see a tab that has something to do with you forking over your hard-earned shekels. In-game shops, battle passes, cases, currency. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I can't wait to spend my money on something called this. In-game stores and free-to-play games, it comes to the territory nowadays. But hey, why would I feel bad about buying something from this store? I got this game for free. Buying one item, it really isn't that bad, right? It says it right there. Free-to-play. Look, free-to-play. It cost me zero dollars. Look, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. And you know what? If an in-game store only sells relatively cheap skins and, and cosmetic items, and it lets you sell them to get your money back on some form of community market, honestly, I don't really care. Like, I, I can't really be asked. This is something that I do. You see this fish? I spent money on this fish. But if you know free-to-play games, especially free-to-play mobile games, then I'm damn sure you know that most of these in-game stores, to say that they charge a lot of money for things, I think that's one of the biggest understatements ever uttered in human history. And what's even worse is that some of these stores, if you want to progress in a somewhat timely manner, mommy, What's your credit card information? <laughs> now, if you somehow don't know, Clash of Clans is a base building game that released in 2012, seven years after Club Penguin came out, where you, the chief, you build, upgrade, and maintain a base that can be invaded by other players from all corners of the world. England, America, China. There's also a campaign in Clash of Clans that, uh, well, I can confirm it is a campaign that exists. But let me tell you, out of the thousands of video games I've played in my 22 years of roaming this earth, games that I love, games that I hate, games that I think are kind of mid. Out of all of them, the game that I reckon is the biggest time sink, it's Clash of Clans. Genuinely, if I sit back here and really think about it, like, like really, really rack my brain, I don't think any game ever comes close to the amount of time you need to sink into Clash of Clans. If you want to build or upgrade something in this game, it takes forever. Like, no joke it. Remember my Clash of Clans village I showed you in the intro of this video? Here it is again to refresh your memory. It's a pretty, pretty standard looking village. I'm currently on Town Hall level 10. To upgrade to Town Hall level 11, besides raising all of the gold and funding that I need, I first need to build all of this stuff, which will take me a shit ton of time as is. If I want to build this inferno tower, like that one with the circle around it, you know how long this would take me? It would take me two and a half days. And I need two of them. But secondly, and more importantly, to go from Town Hall 10 to 11, that'll take me four days. Four more days of waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen. Oh, and uh, here's a fun fact for you. To build and fully upgrade everything in Clash of Clans, it'll take you three to four years. But hey, if I want to speed up and finish the process of upgrading and building, I can always open up my wallet and buy some gems. Gems are Clash of Clans' in-game premium currency. And I don't know if this is a nuclear, never heard before take or anything, but I reckon that manipulating players into buying gems, it's one of the core ideas that went into Clash of Clans' development. It's the reason why everything takes so bloody long to build. Besides just being a cheap, artificial way to keep players coming back to Clash of Clans, waiting around for shit to finish building, it's really, really bloody annoying. I don't want to have to spend a week of my life waiting for some pixels on my screen to look different. Yeah, you know what? Fuck 
waiting around. Here's my credit card information. This is something I've done before. I'm talking from personal experience. 13 year old stupid idiot dumb me. When I played Clash of Clans, I fell victim to this game's uh, everything takes forever to build, bro. So uh, open up your wallets and buy some gems. That whole model, I have bought gems because of it. But sure, okay, I, I know, I know, trust me, I do. I've been playing this game for long enough now. You can get gems for free in Clash of Clans. To let you in on some Clash of Clans information taken straight from the cock game theory, every now and then a box filled with gems will spawn around your village that you can remove to get some of these gems. If you have a builder available, which you won't because you're too busy building other shit. And you can get a couple of gems a day thanks to your gem mine. But if you think this is a decent way to generate passive income... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the amount of gems gem boxes in the gem mine give you and the rate at which they give you them is so slow and so small that it will take you an eon to generate anything close to a substantial amount of gems. And what's even worse is that the more you play Clash of Clans and the more you upgrade your stuff, the more gems it takes to speed through the upgrading process. Meaning that if you were to try to passively earn gems by clicking on your gem mine every day and relying on gem boxes to maybe spawn around your village, it would just take you more and more and more time to get the amount of gems you need. Clash of Clans also has a battle pass. <sighs> Yippee. But, person watching this video, do you want to know what's really, really bloody weird about Clash of Clans? While, yeah, Clash of Clans is built around the player spending money to progress faster, I wouldn't call it pay to win. Because it isn't really. Like, I'm not gonna lie on the internet for once and say that, oh, cock is pay to win. Because, nah, it's not. If anything, it's more pay to progress because if you really 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 wanted to if you're mentally insane you can progress through clash of clans without spending any of your money and if you go away for a while your builders will build up certain parts of your village on their own because uh law but oh, oh my god let me tell you a person watching this video if you plan on playing clash of clans without spending any money get ready to get buried with your phone <laughs> <laughs> the grind never stops. Best piece of advice I can give you to make the whole Clash of Clans free to play speedrun <laughs> more tolerable and, and more enjoyable. It's to allocate all of your builders to build something and then just forget that this game exists for one or two months. Like, like if I want to build this thing, right, my, my Inferno Tower from the beginning of the video, I'll click on the tick to build this thing. Cool, it's going to take two and a half days to build. Just... Oh, sorry, Penguin. Just forget about it. Forget that the game exists. But I really, really can't stress enough how much time Clash of Clans takes to play. Like, remember how earlier I spoke about how it would take me four days to go from Town Hall 10 to 11? Let's say I was going from Town Hall 14 to 15 instead, and I didn't want to spend any money on gems to progress through the process faster. To go from Town Hall 14 to 15, it would take 15 days but that number the number 15 it isn't just some random number that popped into my brain that i decided to write into this video script now nah, god no you see the number 15 it's been the cause of one of if not the biggest supercell related controversy on the internet Ever. And to find out why, how about we move on from Clash of Clans, a game that I've spent a good chunk of my life avoiding touching grass to play, and have a look at another Supercell produced game that I've also spent quite a lot of my life playing. What can I say? <laughs> I'm the average Supercell game consumer. That game being... Moo, I'm a cow. Nah, I I'm just joking. <laughs> what do I look like? A Facebook mom? I've never played Heyday before. <laughs> Much like Cock, I... I've also played my fair share of Clash Royale a couple of years ago when I was still at school. Yeah, Clash Royale was pretty damn popular. Me and my friends, we all played it. We had a clan, we played in that 2v2 game mode with each other. Look, here's my deck. My, why is it not focused? But my deck. I, I don't know if this is any good. Like, I don't know if this is the meta, but it's worked for me. But in any case, I will get ready to get obliterated in the comments section. Back on track, though, if you somehow don't know what Clash Royale is, plain and simple, you know how when one game gets popular, that game studio will either release a sequel or a bunch of different types of spin-off games, you know, racing games, tennis games, gambling. In 
into Clash Royale, a spin-off game released in 2016, 11 years after Club Penguin came out, based in the Clash of Clans video game cinematic universe. But instead of being a game all about building up your own base and raiding other people with your troops and getting kicked out of your clan because uh, you're not committed to the clan war enough, Clash Royale is a 1v1 dual strategy type of video game where you try your best to make the person you're battling hold their phone against the wall. But come on, you know what this game is? Remember this meme from a few months ago? Like the funny king he 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 hard meme? It's that game. This meme comes from that game. Here's the thing with Clash Royale though. Unlike Clash of Clans, a game that's pay to progress, Clash Royale, it's full on pay to win. If you want to see Supercell's greed in its purest form, download and try to play Clash Royale. At its core, Clash Royale works off upgrading your troops, and to upgrade your troops, you need to get a specific amount of cards for that character. Like, let's say I want to upgrade my... What card can I upgrade here? My... My Hog Rider. Okay, my Hog Rider's on level 10 at the moment. If I want to upgrade my Hog Rider from level 10 to level 11, I need to get 400 Hog Rider cards. I bet you can guess what's coming next. <laughs> Your best bet to getting more cards to upgrade your troops, it isn't by actually playing Clash Royale. Nah. Open your wallet, please. For 250 gems, you can buy the lightning chest. For 750 gems, you can buy the fortune chest. For 2,500 gems, you can buy the legendary king's chest. Man, I, I, I love loot boxes. I love them. I... I love loot boxes! I love them so much! Oh, and uh, by the way, fun piece of Clash Royale lore for you. Besides the amount you have to spend on these chests getting so much higher if you want to get cards for higher tier troops like Epic and Legendary, these chests... They're completely RNG. You could spend a shit ton of your money hoping to get cards for one troop, but then just never get them. There are 109 total troops in Clash Royale. Your deck is made up of eight of them. Most of the time, you're gonna get things that you don't use. And then to actually go through with the upgrade, you still need to pay gold. Something you can also buy in the shop. But okay, cool, sure, okay, you can buy cards, but surely if you have higher leveled cards, you get placed in higher leveled arenas, right? Wrong. For starters, your arena level scales with these, the amount of trophies you've got. It doesn't have anything to do with your actual card levels. Like, within these arenas, if you wanted to, you can buy a shit ton of chests and just over-level so you can, so you can stomp on little children whose parents and let them spend money on video games. It's blatantly pay to win, but it gets so much worse. You see this cool and epic graphic design is my passion looking number in that blue sticker at the top of my screen? That's my overall level in Clash Royale. Now, thankfully, since I've played this game on and off for years now, it is quite high. Touching grass, uh, cringe. But let's say that my level wasn't that high. To go through all of the different arenas in Clash Royale, besides having a certain amount of trophies, you also need to reach specific specific levels. Like, if you want to get to this place, uh, the Industrial Accident Simulator Arena, you'd have to be level 5. Guess how you get experience? Upgrading cards. This is so blatantly greedy and, and gross and disgusting, but what sucks is that it never used to be this way. Back in the day when I started playing, if you were good, you could just progress through arena after arena. The only thing that mattered was your trophy count. Something that increases the more you win. So, if you were the GOAT of Clash Royale, you could make it all the way to the final arena while still only being level 1. Clash Royale, it used to reward players that have skill. But now, it rewards players that have got more zeros on the end of their bank balances. But it gets so much worse. Remember the number 15, the number I really tried to drill into your brain a few minutes ago? Here's why. Level 15, or as Supercell call it, Elite Level, it's currently the highest level your cards can reach in Clash Royale. But to reach level 15... Oh my god. God. Firstly, you need your card to be level 14. <laughs> Good luck there, mate. See you in 25 years. But following that, if you think you've spent time farming cards already, bro, you haven't seen anything yet. To go from level 14 to level 15, you need to collect something called Elite Wild Cards, which is basically just a fancy name given to level 14 cards. Guess how many Elite Wild Cards you need. If you want, I'll give you a few more seconds to work it out. Fifty. 
thousand. Now, thankfully, it does seem like these wild cards all go into one big pool, so you don't need to collect 50,000 of the same card. But plain and simple, that's just no excuse. 50,000! What the fuck? To really put that into perspective, here we have a Clash Royale Legendary card. It's one of the rarest cards in this game. To get these, your best bet is to buy legendary chests in the shop because, <laughs> of course, it is money, please. If you want to get this card from level 14 to 15, first, you have to get it to level 14. More money, please. But then, to reach that 50,000 card threshold, you'd have to collect... 250 more level 14 legendary cards or 25,000 more common level 14 cards or 5,000 more level 14 rare cards or a thousand more level 14 epic cards or a hundred more level 14 champion cards this is to max out one card by the way one do you know how much money this would cost free to play <laughs> Free to play, by the way. I'll give credit where credit is due. If Supercell's end goal is to drive away their entire player base, I mean, Supercell. Oh, well done, mate. You're doing a go-to job. Here's another stat for you. If you wanted to max out every single card in Clash Royale, guess how long it would take? <laughs> Four and a half years. I know I like to make jokes and funny statements and ooh, witty one-liners in my videos, but genuinely... I'm honestly speechless. This is disgusting. I don't think I've ever seen anything as greedy as this in a video game ever. This is indefensible. And I haven't even spoken about new cards being released broken or the battle pass. Clash Royale is purposefully designed to steal money from your wallet. But there is still one thing that I just don't understand, I don't comprehend, and it's something to do with Supercell themselves. What's so odd is that on the one hand, you've got Clash Royale pay to win in Garnet, but then on the other hand, you've got another Supercell game. A game that's apparently the complete opposite. Right, so uh, you know how in the Clash of Clans section of this video and the Clash Royale section of this video, I waffled on about, ooh, I've been playing these games for quite a long time now. Before making this video, I'd never played Brawl Stars before. Like, ever. Never ever. But just because I had never played it before, it didn't mean that I didn't know some things about the game. I knew that was a 3v3 type of game where you have to brawl other players, you know, Brawl Stars. Brawl. But all jokes aside, I've also heard that Brawl Stars on the Supercell game pay to win hierarchy totem pole thing is apparently all the way at the very bottom. According to people on the internet, Brawl Stars isn't very pay to win. Thing is though, for every YouTube video and every single disgusting smelly Reddit post I find talking about how, oh, Brawl Stars, it isn't pay to win, five seconds later, I'll find another YouTube video or another Reddit post talking about about how Brawl Stars is just another stereotypical Supercell pay to win game, you know, like average basic Supercell type beat. It's all just really, really bloody confusing. So I wanna ask you person watching this video, as somebody who doesn't really have any experience at all with Brawl Stars, is this game pay to win? Like, is it just another age Supercell I am going to drink all of your money game? Or is it on uh, anti-money sobriety diet? I don't know, like genuinely, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'd love to hear what you'd have to say about it, especially if you played this game quite a lot. So tell me about it in the comments. But man, oh my God, Supercell, I reckon that they're the greediest mobile gaming company of all time. And if you want to see the prime example of corporate greed in a video game, download Clash Royale. Oh no. <laughs> There's two more Clash games coming out. With all that being said, though, if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you. I, I appreciate it. And while you're still listening to every single word and syllable and vowel coming out of my mouth, why don't you go watch all of my other videos and all of their ads and do all of the stereotypical leave a like and subscribe and bell notification YouTube buzzword stuff. And while you do that, I'm going to go back to trying to remember the password for my iPod Touch because... It's just gone out of my brain. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Number 15. Subscribe to The Beak. If you don't, you will suffer a severe case of cringe, and you are taking part in bozo behavior. Thanks for watching.